Are you feeling chronically fatigued? Tired more frequently than normal? Perhaps you have those dark rings under your eyes or your kids? You kind of look like a heroin addict? Maybe you're not sure really what's going on. Maybe you have adrenal fatigue, and in this video, I'm gonna walk you through five symptoms sounding the alarm that you need to know about, and then I'm gonna walk you through my eight steps you must follow to heal adrenal fatigue for good. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Emmett Blonick, founder of nextlevelhealth.com, a best-selling author, a certified weight management specialist, a nutritional counselor, and a board-certified specialist in obesity professional education. I'm your virtual health expert here to help get you to the next level with your health, your happiness, and your lifestyles. And if you find this helpful, you guys, hit that like button and hit that share button if you feel like this, you know, this particular segment could help you or somebody else. Today we're going to talk about how to overcome adrenal fatigue or adrenal burnout. So many people today struggle with adrenal burnout or adrenal insufficiency. It's major fatigue issues, and it's due to problems with your adrenal glands. See, these endocrine glands, they produce hormones like adrenaline and cortisol, and there are these two walnut-sized organs that sit on top of your kidneys. So what is adrenal fatigue? Essentially, you're demanding so much hormone response from your adrenals that they become burned out, fatigued, or exhausted. You ever feel like that? These little glands, um, they're trying to adapt to that biological stress response in your body or your kids. That's a, that's a lot to expect from these little guys here. So considering the era of stress that we're in today, now I want you to think about that, the velocity and the demands of our days. Now that's a lot of stress. So just imagine these two little walnut size um, glands, they're responsible for all of the stress in our lives. In fact, studies suggest that about 80% of the U.S. population considers themselves highly stressed physically, emotionally, financially, nutritionally, sexually, even spiritually. That's a lot of stress to put on these little guys. So no wonder why about 60% of people endure, in my estimate, endure adrenal fatigue and adrenal burnout. So what the adrenal glands do uh, under periods of stress or stress trigger, triggers, they're gonna release stress hormones like adrenaline and cortisol. And these hormones are really important to help us when our body engages in that fight or flight response. That's that instinctual and immediate survival stress response that our body intelligently and innately relies on for survival. And that's good in a short-term acute crisis situation, uh, but not over you know, extended periods of time and durations of time, especially on a day-to-day -day basis. So what triggers the neurobiological stress response or fight or flight? For example, have you ever, um, have you ever heard of that story where you know, the mom sees the kid under the car or in trouble and she somehow gets that superhuman strength to lift up the car or, or when we had to escape danger and hunt for our food in those primal years of our life, um, you know, the, the times when we were hunters and gatherers, you know, that's the, that's the flight or fight mechanism. I can go on and on with these types of circumstances and it's appropriate in an acute short-term crisis situation, it's necessary. However, Today, the problem is that the, the triggers uh, of the stress response you know, that your little walnut adrenals need to adapt to has become chronic. So when people are dealing with chronic stress, that ongoing nonstop stress response, it's happening day in and day out and it's actually hurting you and it's harming you or your kids. And that same body biochemical neurological shift, hormone demand, is elicited from things like primarily your diet. Uh, it, that's going to trigger it. Um, too many refined foods, too many processed sugars and processed carbs. Your kids are eating too many sweets and treats. But also some of the stressors or the triggers are the, uh, it's the bad emails. It's uh, the bad letter you got. Boom stress response. Your body goes through that entire process, but you're not hunting anything. 
Um, it's the bad social media post that you saw, the anxiety or rage that you're feeling, the upsetting phone call. Whatever your brain neurologically perceives as a stressor or danger, your kids, like on games, playing video games too much on the screen, too much screen time, that virtual war that they're having in their brains uh, and in the, in the velocity of our times, that's happening way too often for way too long a duration of time. And you're now suffering that cascade of biochemical alterations in your body that leads to adrenal fatigue. So my top cues or signals that you have adrenal fatigue or your kids is that you have those dark rings under your eyes. If you constantly feel tired and fatigued, even if you get enough sleep at night, you know, these are the, the major warning signs that you have adrenal fatigue. Cortisol should be highest in the morning and that alerts the body to prepare for the challenges and the demands of the day. And cortisol should kind of slowly decline throughout the day, but in a lot of cases with adrenal fatigue, cortisol may be higher during the day and even in the evening, and that's gonna mess up your circadian rhythm. So it keeps you revved up at night, and, the, and then, you know, in the morning, you, you or your kids, your bodies feel like you you still need sleep. So low morning energy is a nice little sign to keep in mind with respect to adrenal fatigue. Now match that up, that low morning energy, now match that up with this. Hey, if you or your kids have trouble concentrating, focusing, or brain fog, those are warning signs you have adrenal fatigue or adrenal insufficiency. If you feel overwhelmed, you know, with fear, panic, anxiety, or stress. These may be warning signs you have adrenal fatigue. Also, if you have a, a thyroid condition, uh, whether it's a hyper or hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's or Graves' disease, then you probably have an undetected adrenal issue as well. Some of the other warning signs could be that you are storing excess body fat. If you have you know, if you're one of those people that have gone to the gym and you've worked out for hours and you're, you're still not losing that weight, maybe you can't get that extra five or 10 pounds off, you may have adrenal fatigue or adrenal insufficiency. Cravings, especially salty food cravings, um, some sweets, but if you're really getting more of the salty things like the foods like chips and fries, and that's because the cortex, on top of the adrenal glands produce aldosterone, a hormone that regulates, uh, it reg it regulates electrolyte balance. So sodium and water balance in your body and sometimes a simple multi-mineral or sea salt even helps balance everything out. It's just as simple as that. So complex conditions don't mean there's not simple solutions. We wanna start to dial it in. Um, and I actually had I actually went through a period of adrenal fatigue and adrenal burnout when I was actually starting my first clinic uh, many years ago. Uh, simultaneously, what I was doing is, you, know, you can imagine all the things to go with building out a clinic or you know, starting up a business. In addition to, um, I was in a new marriage and I had also uh, simultaneously was running marathons and, and triathlons and competed in an Ironman. So the physical, the emotional, the, the um, just neurological stress overwhelmed me and, and you couldn't see me walking around without those, those dark rings under my eyes. So I know what it feels like and that's why I wanna help you with it because it is just brutal. And then finally, the other thing that can lend to this is uh, body burden microtoxins. Uh, chemicals. Um, these, these types of body burden toxins certainly tax the adrenals. Most often, like heavy metal toxicity, they attack the endocrine system. They have an affinity for it. Your thyroid gland, your endocrine glands, uh, your adrenal glands. Because these little suckers require the body to respond and then you have an increased sensitivity to things like food allergens, environmental allergens, weather allergies and even autoimmune diseases. 
So it's really important to understand that your adrenals, very, very important for helping your body feel its best. So let's talk about step number one in healing the adrenals and adrenal fatigue is to really address your diet. All right, so step number one is addressing the foods. And what I would suggest is to really look at your diet and eliminate any of the refined stuff. So refined sugars and carbs, your sweets and treats, your breads uh, and carbs. Uh, what I would suggest is really do a 30 day simply eat real food challenge. So uh, real foods, not processed and refined foods. So it's time to get rid of the sweets, the breads, the sodas, the candy, and even worse, most pasteurized store-bought juices and milk. See, sugar is an anti-nutrient, which means it requires more energy and demands more from your body. It stresses your body, and your body needs to deal with a nasty little bugger called sugar. Um, and it doesn't really give you much value. So once again, if you want to rebound from adrenal fatigue, that's what we're talking about, and you want to bounce back from burnout, then do a 30-day Simply Eat Real Food Challenge and a collagen load. And have an emphasis on foods that really support your adrenal glands and foods that are high in uh, vitamin B12 and magnesium, also foods that help sta stabilize blood sugar levels and your energy levels, things like coconut products, coconut meat and milk and oils. Uh, those are great for supporting your adrenal glands. So step number one in healing adre adrenal fatigue is to simply eat real foods. I suggest doing a 30-day simply eat real food challenge and a collagen load. So number two here, you guys, is to reduce stimulants. You know, I think we think of stimulants as caffeine. Um, and what the other part is, is things like your energy drinks, your soda, so stimulants in those things. You know, so you gotta be cautious of you know, what your kids are drinking, what you're drinking, where are you getting that stimulation, that's those stimulants into your nervous system. Excitatory stimulants, so how much um, are your kids or you in front of the screens, the TVs, the Game Boys, the gaming, all of those things, here, here's what happens. It's excitatory information coming in, your nervous system. Your, your brain has to deal with that. And uh, there's not a lot of like jogging and running typically when you're looking at your computer or you're looking at your TV or you're looking at you know, the gaming thing there or your kids are. It's a lot of neural excitatory information coming in and that can stimulate the nervous system. And now we're back to the fight or flight response. So remember you guys, spending too much time or your kids spending too much time in front of the screen, too much screen time, it's been linked to physical brain damage uh, on a micro level. It's been linked to antisocial behaviors, depression and loneliness. It's been linked to unhealthy eating habits, even obesity. It's been linked to sleeping problems and of course stress. The American Academy of Pediatrics on their website notes a recent study that shows that the average eight to 10 year old spends nearly eight hours a day with different types of media, screen media, and even older children, teens, spend more than 11 hours per day. So if you're gonna really address that excitatory neural stimuli, remember this is, this, what we're trying to do here, you guys, is we're trying to address and heal adrenal fatigue. So if you're really gonna do that, my recommendation is limiting your screen time or their screen time to two hours or less per day. And in kids under five, no screen time. So if you really want to address this and, and you want them to be healthy and happy, um, then we have to uh, address it responsibly and maturely. So uh, limiting that screen time to less than two hours per day, you're gonna definitely see an impact immediately. Now I drink coffee, but it's the right type of coffee. It's been washed essentially, cleansed of any of the mycotoxins, those microtoxins, funguses and molds and spores that come in a, a lot of the majority of the most popular coffees that uh, you guys are drinking today. So have you ever felt that like little zip when you drink some coffee 
and then it's followed by almost like kind of like that jittery nervous sensation after drinking a cup of coffee and then boom you kind of crash and you get that little dark ring well those that's due to mycotoxins because typically let's say you have that same caffeine and in like a soda you don't get that like real high zip and then crash and then the jittery thing so what your body is responding to from a stress perspective is it's responding to those mycotoxins. So what I would suggest is get, you know, get yourself the right type of coffee. So if you're gonna drink coffee, then my recommendation is black, freshly ground, organic, organic free trade, um, those types, um, types of clean bean coffee. The ones I like specifically are Bulletproof. I like Kion, which is K-I-O-N, uh, or even Caveman. Throw some raw butter in there, some MCT oil or ghee or SCT oil, and that's gonna jumpstart your metabolism. It's gonna be less of a burden on your adrenal glands, and you're not gonna suffer with adrenal fatigue um, as opposed to drinking some of those other types of coffees that have those mycotoxins in there. Let's talk about supplements. Um, there's a number of great ones that I would suggest. I would take uh, 300 to 500 milligrams of a B complex vitamin. That's gonna include your B12, it's gonna include your B6, your B5, and B9. But I would say, you know, three to 500 milligrams per day, those B complex vitamins, which is critical for your adrenal glands, especially B12. Make sure you have a good multi-mineral along with magnesium, selenium, as well as vitamin D, which is also critical to support your adrenals. Magnesium deficiency may be a heavy hitter when it comes to destroying your adrenal glands. Selenium is a mineral that works as an antioxidant that also supports the adrenal glands. So those are the most important nutrients to support your adrenals in terms of supplements. Uh, as, as we talked about the magnesium there, I would suggest getting about three to 500 milligrams per day. Vitamin D, D3, here's how you do this. You take half of your weight. So for instance, I'm 180 pounds, slice your weight in half. Um, so for me, that would be 90. And then multiply that by 100. So that would be 9,000. So what you want on average, give or take, is about 9,000 minimum international units of vitamin D uh, per day. Collagen bone broth is filled with beneficial nutrients packed with rich flavors, uh, gelatin to seal and heal your leaky gut, and essential amino acids that are exceptionally helpful for anyone who is feeling run down, ill or suffering from adrenal fatigue. So for uh, adrenal fatigue, I would make sure I get a collagen bone broth, a scoop. Uh, so something like this, collagen bone broth, a scoop maybe one to three times per day to seal and heal and get those beneficial amino acids uh, to, help, uh, to help you with adrenal fatigue. Uh, finally, you know, melatonin can help. <laughs> you know, I kind of think of it like this, it mellows you out, but also CBD oil. I think people are hearing more and more about the benefits of CBD or hemp oil. My suggestion would be, you know, so if, if you're using something like ours, the CBD Surge, 250 milligrams start there, and then maybe work up to 1,000 milligrams uh, once, to t once to twice per day immediately kind of see a relief in the anxiety. It kind of cuts the edge there. And the other thing that I like is a chamomile. So you might want to try some chamomile yourself. Okay, so number four, there's a group of herbs or roots called adaptogen herbs or adaptogenic herbs, which include a family of things like ashwagandha root, rhodiola, holy basil, licorice root, um, and even ginseng. So Adaptogen herbs are titled adaptogens because they help your body essentially adapt and deal with the stress and kind of kind of just balance you out, balance hormones out. So think of it like this. If some like like a hormone is too low, what it does is it helps balance it out. It brings it up to balance. That's what adaptogens do. One of them that I love um, that I suggest is the uh, fermented ashwagandha root. That's my particular favorite there. But get yourself some adaptogen herbs. Nowadays, you can actually get uh, capsules where it has most of those in there all in one. So try some adaptogen herbs. Ashwagandha root, rhodiola, and ginger root are my favorites. 
And then number, number five here is essential oils. And the one that I, my favorite by far is lavender oil. Um, definitely has a calming effect. Uh, you can, you know, what, what we actually do in our family, we, when we take our dog for drives, he, he tends to get a little hyper. So what we do is we just put three drops on a little scarf or a scarf or his collar, and that just mellows him out. And so you can think about that, you know, a couple, two, three drops, whether it's on your kid's collar going to school, you know, if they're stressed out or they're at a party or they're even at a social gathering of your own at your own house, that might be something to think about. The other one is rosemary and then holy basil. These are my favorite essential oils that have uh, just history in a therapeutic effect at it, as it addresses the stress response as well as adrenal fatigue. So if we're gonna um, heal adrenal fatigue naturally, you gotta include some of those essential oils. I love them. And then one category that cannot be stressed enough and it always gets left out is, is making sure you're, you're generous and plentiful with your good fats. Good fats, we're talking about your coconut oil, your raw butter, avocado oil, MCT oil, ghee or SCT oil. I love avocado oil on salads, but here's why you guys, your brain is made up of, of cholesterol, it's made up of fats, your, your glands, you know, producing hormones, hormones, the production of hormones actually comes from fats as well. So you need that kind of, think of it as the fuel source for hormone production. And so if you're insufficient or your adrenaline is depleted, you got to have the fuel source for that. And that all comes from the base of it, which is your fats for fuel. So make sure you get your good fats in there, your coconut oil, raw butter, fish oil. You know, you should have your omega fats, your avocado, palm, olive oil, MCT oil. Get yourself some free range eggs and stay away from the bad fats. And then last but not least, if you really want to address adrenal fatigue and adrenal burnout, you got to stress less or you got to at least address stress, the stress ores in your life. You got to lower those overall stress levels. You got to give your body time to rest and recover, which means you need quality sleep. So if you're like me and you like to push it or you just have a busy life, you have to be mindful of the, the, the necessity your body requires to replenish and repair during that deep REM state of sleep. So make sure you're mindful of getting good rest and good sleep. You know, you can, you can help yourself get into that state by using some more natural supplements like we were talking about, the melatonin and the, the chamomile, the 5-HTP or even CBD oil will help throughout the day. It's calming, it helps calm your anxiety and nerves. Let's agree that it's virtually impossible to eliminate all forms of stressors. We're going to be hit all day with them, but we can, however, be mindful of how we adapt and process the effects of stressors. So here's what I want you to do, guys. Try a 30-day challenge. Make that go along with your 30-day Simply Eat Real Food Challenge. Try a 30-day challenge. Let's try to reduce stress, your stress or your kid's stress, by 1% a day for the next 30 days. That alone will help you improve your adrenal function. It'll help regulate your hormone production. It'll help you, help you be more mindful. And it'll help heal your adrenal glands by at least 30% in one month. Then here's what I want you to do. I want you to schedule and commit some quality time, some QT with your family, your significant other, your kids. Um, schedule some time for fitness and fun, some joy. You gotta get out and laugh. You gotta have some fun. Let go a little bit, you guys. Don't hold on so tight like me. I do that, I tend to do that, so I gotta be mindful of that. Get out for a brisk walk or a jog. Hit the gym. One thing that is phenomenal is mindfulness, being present and meditation. In fact, some schools today even implement mindful meditation as part of their morning regime. Even some schools do this, the kids that get sent to detention, you know what they have them do? Meditation, they don't fall asleep, they meditate, and it's reduced some of those detentions by up to 50%. 
You all know exercise reduces stress and exercise can help. So I would suggest you get at least um, what we have is we have a three minute whole body workout with our Surge Fit program. One thing that's phenomenal is Pilates and yoga, but uh, make sure you're getting some form of exercise into your, your stressing less regime. So start with three minutes and go from there up to 20 to 30 minutes, reduce stress, promote restful sleep, repair and recovery, and you're gonna help overcome adrenal fatigue. You can naturally cure your adrenal fatigue fast. What, what I recommend you do, number one, change your diet, simply eat real foods, get the simple carbs, refined carbs and processed grains, stop or minimize, um, dramatically minimize the sweets and the treats for your kids, start loading up on nutrient dense foods, especially green leafy vegetables, and healthy good fats, avocado, coconut oil, ghee, SAT, uh, raw butter. Avoid daily stimulants and excitatory stimulants like the screen, screen time. We know that that can be harmful, so I'll limit that to a maximum, I should say, of, of two hours per day, especially for the kids. Make sure you're getting some of those vitamins. The art of elimination, eliminate those things that are hurting you. Eliminate nerve interference. Maybe if you have to get adjusted by a chiropractor or somebody specifically that is like an upper cervical doctor, uh, checking your nervous system for interference, uh, make sure you're addressing your nervous system and, and eliminate any interference with that. Avoid those daily stimulants and excitatory stimuli. Be mindful of the detrimental nature of that constant state of fight or flight stress response. And then ask yourself, is it worth it? You know, find a plot twist as one of my, one of my, uh, my team members would say to me, like plot twist. When she knows I'm going down a road that is kind of getting under my skin, my, my blood's boiling, you got to find a plot twist. And sometimes just saying that out loud is all it takes. So take a deep breath. Take a couple deep diaphragmatic breaths. That helps reduce stress. Laugh out loud. Go for a walk, follow some of these simple steps and you're well on your way to and healing adrenal fatigue. Those adrenal fatigue and adrenal burnout symptoms. Hey guys, this has been Dr. Emmett Blonick, your virtual health expert with natural steps to heal adrenal fatigue. And if you know somebody that's struggling with those signs and symptoms of adrenal fatigue, like those dark rings under their eyes, you know that they're just stressed out all the time. Uh, maybe this can help them. So hit that like button, hit that share button, or share it in a private message with them. Until I see you again, guys, remember why you're here. I'll see you soon. Give me a kiss.